Daddy, you go crazy. DJ UTV, let them know who we got in the building. Jeffrey Wilson. Jeffrey Wilson, what you on, gang? Man, just chilling, chilling, man. Well, welcome to DJ UTV. It's definitely a blessing to have you here, for sure. This interview is brought to you by the Beer Boss. Fellas, shop with the Beer Boss, get 20% off when you use the promo code DJ UTV. Mr. Wilson, we hear you got an interesting story, man. Yeah, I do, man. From growing up in Inglewood, it was a rough life, man. Yeah. Yeah, real rough. Well, most recently on DJ UTV, we had we had an interview with uh, Miss Rwanda. Yes. And um and, and throughout her interview, you know, she, she kept mentioning her husband Jeffrey Wilson. Yeah. And um when we listen to her interview, when we watch the interview, we say, man, it's a crazy story, but it sounds like Jeffrey Wilson was like the real nigga in the in the in the situation. Yeah. He was my ride or die, yeah. no, no doubt with that. And I have a lot of respect for him mm -hmm. because a lot of men wouldn't have been able to get involved in that, you mm -hmm. know. But um, he just wasn't afraid of it. He just right. a, he's a real nigga. He, yeah. he ain't afraid of that. Yeah. yeah. We, we're definitely interested in, you know, hearing your perspective, you know, your side of things, you know. Uh, but let's just start out with what, what, what side of Chicago are you from? The south side of Chicago. Okay. Inglewood grew up on 64th and Normal. Okay. Went to school I went to at Kershaw, Walter Reed, and then Inglewood. Okay. The old castle, they would call it, way back in the day. And every, if the games was out there then, you know, they had rivals, you know, with the disciples, you know, with black gangs disciples. Then they had the BDs. Then they had the black stones over east by CVS High School. You know, things, it wasn't like it is now, you know. They weren't fighting a lot, all that killing. It wasn't a lot of that back in the 80s. But like, you know, everybody knew each other, everybody respected each other back then. Yeah. When all that snitching and telling on each other, you know, we did things, stole cars, radios, and things like that. When you're young, you do things like that. But as you get older, you realize, you know, that's not the right path to go. You get caught up, go to jail, get a felony. Back then, then you can't get a job. So it was time to stop all that and, and focus on my career yeah. and have a life. You know, I started having kids. I had two daughters. So it was time for me to raise my daughters and do the right thing. I had to step back from a lot of the, the streets and all that. I, I ran with a lot of people, Fluky Stokes, all those big guys. Ran the street, sold drugs, you know, back in the day. I stopped probably back in like 90. I left all that stuff alone. I start working, just trying to just trying to build a family, you know, get married and have the kids and live right, and that that was my whole thing about changing my life and and stay away from a lot of my friends that I thought that was cool, but they wasn't. Yeah. They was turning their back on me. When I got married and this incident happened with me and my wife, she would come home and tell me that people was trying to kill her, things like that. that you know, and I was like, who trying to kill you? And then they, they got our phone number out at Seven Dish. They had a book on, on the desk with our home address, the phone number. So they was calling the house. And we stayed on 117th and Campbell. So I would call. They were like, we're going to kill you motherfuckers and shit like that. So and I would call her at work. And I was like, somebody got our home phone number and they called him. So she started recording it. Then later on, I was in the streets. And this guy was telling me, he said, we're going to kill Mary J. So I was trying to figure out Mary J. You know, then I, I thought, I said, that's Wanda. So I was like, uh, we met in the storage place. He was talking about, we're going to kill her tomorrow morning in the park. So I'm like, what the fuck? You know, it really bothered me. I'm like, this motherfucker. I said, who put the hit out? He said, police also want her dead. So it didn't dawn on me it was Michael Clifton the whole time. Because he had called the FBI and told the FBI that one was harboring a, a gang member. And the FBI called me and he came to the house and interviewed me, Mark Longridge. And he was like, I, he, he told me, he said, I know it was a police officer call because he gave them everything on me, things that didn't nobody else know when I ran the streets. And this guy just told everything. And, and Mark Long, he was like, uh, we're going to get him. We're going to get the guy. Because we, we didn't check you out. We see you ain't doing none of this. You working. 
And I'm like, and I was like, why would this guy do this to me? And we run the streets, do, do everything together. And you trying to set me up to send me to prison, make me lose everything because you went with one. I didn't know about they had a relationship. I never knew because I had run in the liquor store at 59th and Racine. So she come back that want to drive my, uh, that Cadillac I had. It's a Seville I had back then, the 86 Seville. She asked me because she drive. That's when I first, you know, I seen her, you know, running around. She's like, me and my girlfriend want to go out, go out to, you know, go out to dinner and something, drive your car. I said, well, if you want to drive, you can drive it. You know, I was just joking around with her at the liquor store. And later on, she started coming around. We got cool, started messing around, things like that. And then I, we went and got a Mercedes Benz. I remember it was a, 1995 Mercedes-Benz, it was a C280 we bought on 90th from Kesey at the Mercedes-Benz dealership. So I told her, I said, do not drive this car to work. I said, please do not drive this car to the police station because the shit gonna kick off because none of those police officers are driving these cars. So as soon as she drove to work one day, that's when the shit hit the fan. Motherfuckers calling, and tell me I, I'm a drug dealer, I bought it at car, I'm doing all this shit all the time and I was so pissed, you know, and I like this motherfucker then. Some of her friends, I can't think of the police officer's name, but she was doing a lot of shit too. And this other police officer, Al Kennedy, I, I couldn't stand that motherfucker. He's a snitch. He would go back in Inglewood and report back to the drug dealers and tell them what was going on and shit like that, lying and shit about different things. You know, and I, I hated that dude, man. He had family live around there, so. He worked for the police? Yeah, he was a police officer. Worked in the tactical unit with Wanda. Okay. But this motherfucker, he was going around doing a lot of shit, man. And he knew I knew. He would go back just to get favors from the game, man, keep them from doing shit to him. He would go back and report. That's why I tell people don't trust the police a lot of them. Those cap means you can't fuck with it. Because they got family, they go back and tell their family, then that's how you end up dead. So, you know, you got to be mad for all that. But one, you know, she was, um, back to her, she was a good police officer. She got all type of awards and everything. But when she do an incident report on somebody, it would come up missing in the police station. She would tell me when she go back to get the card, it was missing. When she locked somebody up, they was out. Like, they was really fucking with her. Internal fair, Charles Williams, he came to my house. He was saying that um, we know Michael Clifton setting you up, but he was lying to me. He was playing me the whole fucking time. So they set a Camaro out on, on our block. They sit out there for like a week watching us every fucking day. And then they got JB truck, the one who was going to kill one. They ran around in his fucking truck around our house. Hmm. So they was all together, the killer, the knockoff, all of them. And they sit in McDonald's that think that, that afternoon before the shooting happened, they was in McDonald's on 78 from West and sitting there plotting the whole thing. So I was at home sleep because I was taking hard medication. So Wanda called me and said, this, this guy following her in the blazer. So I'm all fucked up, you know, because I'm on that medicine. So I jump up, get in my car, I fly down Western. So I meet her by little Miss Muffin. So when I get down there, I ain't see him. So on our way coming back down west into 80, I see his ass sitting on the side. So I spin my fucking car around. I jump, I said, motherfucker, who the fuck, why the fuck you following her? He ain't saying shit, you know what I'm saying? So I just pulled my gun out. He, he just got back nervous. Then I shot him, then he shot at me. And then he was trying to get away in the truck and that's when I shot the tires out and shot the back glass out the car. And then uh, all the other police started coming from everywhere. Then they put handcuffs on him. But the car wasn't registered to the police department at all. And the rest of the police, they were sitting in, in the park, sitting there waiting on the hit to go down so they could just disperse and get away with it. But it didn't go that way. Cause they, they was gonna knock off. And, and that was the whole plan. So they, uh, the FBI came out there too. You know, that's when they, they took him into the station. Then he's sitting in there laughing. Then he talking about I shot him. He was saying all this shit at the police station, but if you shot while you're in the station, that's what I was trying to figure out. If you shot, you're going straight to the hospital. They gave him a ward because he lied and said he got shot. They docked up a lot of shit, man, yeah. to mess us up like that. Now, I was so pissed. 
Then I'm end up going to court for three years. They had told me they were gonna give me for money laundering, all type of shit. Then they, when they had me in state, they were saying um, we're gonna give, you gonna do thirty years for trying to kill a police officer. I said, what about my wife wanting to put fuck her? That's what they said. They snatched a badge off of everything. They didn't give a fuck. And Michael Clifton in the background, like he did what he needed to do to us, to destroy us. And that's, that's what he did, to mess up everything. My whole life, you know, putting that felony on me, I couldn't go out and, and do nothing, get no job, nothing. It, it really, it really hurt me real bad. You know, I wanted to get revenge on his ass. That's how I felt, man. You know, but it, it didn't happen to him. He got caught up on them rapes and all that shit, you know. So it took 20 some years to get him, but he got his ass. He lost everything. His wife left him every fucking thing, you know. Now you see how, how the shit feel to lie on somebody. You know, so I tell people, you just gotta be mindful who the fuck you fuck with, you know. Everybody ain't your friend. And, and I tell people, guys in England that I knew, one shit, a lot of my friends, some of them that I used to steal cars with, when the police went to interview them, they lied on me. You know, just told lies just to, just to try to bring me down farther and farther. You know, cause you ain't got shit, cause I'm driving nice cars, you making the same fucking money I'm making. Cause you, you don't want to buy shit, you want to do other bullshit, I don't, I'm not doing the same shit you doing. So don't fucking lie on me. And they was glad when I went to jail. A lot of them. They were so fucking happy, man, to see me gone. You know, everybody to see when you when you doing good and they can bring you down, and people more happy. And the police department, they was part of it. They they tell a whole lot of lies to bring you down. Um, you know, it still bothers me to this day, and it's been 28 years. A lot of time I don't even drive down Western. Cause I had flashbacks of that shooting, mm -hmm. you know, somebody shooting at you, you shooting at this guy, you, you know, you fear for your life. It was just real hard for me, man. Mm -hmm. Trying to raise my daughter, you know, sitting in prison four years, diff went to different prisons every year. They trained me to a different prison. You in there with fags, they, you got a cellmate that's homosexual, all this other shit, you know, you dealing with a whole lot of shit you don't want to deal with. You know, guys that you know from the street, you see them in the penitentiary, they gay. Mm. A lot of guys I knew in the street were supposed to been hard. They down there sucking dick and all type of stuff, man. Mm. I, 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 you know, I never expected that, to see them like that. When they see me in there, they were just looking. You know, and I was like, all the connection I got with the Mexicans and all that, I just got a whole lot of powerful friends. You know, when that, when that thing happened, they was coming. You know, when they seen that shit on the news, they weren't playing. Don't, don't lie on that man like that, you know. I wasn't in the street putting my name out in the club. I tell you, you cannot do that. If you're in the business of making money, you can't be in the club hanging around a lot of women. Cause that's your downfall. That's how you're gonna go to jail. But they're gonna tell them, they get mad, they're gonna tell on you. So that's, that's why I always stay low. And at the police station, they were like, we see him all the time. We never suspected him. That's what they were saying in the station. Because I never was out there like that. Then they put me out there um, saying I was robbing all the people, robbing all them drug dealers and shit. They put me out there for that shit too. Said I was wearing masks and all type of shit, but they ain't had no proof. But that's what they put out there on me. But I was like, I ain't said shit. You know, the FBI guy told me, he said, don't say shit to him. He was like, they don't have shit on you. Don't talk to him. You know, it was one other officer too came in the room was telling me, don't, don't talk. You know, but um, we one that we did a, a lot of things, you know, life was all right. And it was just things that I seen, yeah. you know, for her to be messing around on me and that's just got Lee Daly and I was like, you know, why you gotta do this shit? And just a lot of shit, man. A lot of guys that I knew about other police coming telling me about it, but I just I just left it alone. She was pregnant doing the shooting with my daughter Lauren. After that, you know, and things just started going down after shooting. She was like, 
ready to go and didn't want to be together. So I was, that's it. You know, I went to jail, just left me hanging. One time visit, mm. nothing. She only visited you once when you was locked up? Yeah. How long were you locked up? Four, four years? Four years and wow. never sent me no money, nothing, mm. nothing. Whoa. Nothing. Left me, left me high and dry, man. Nothing. But I couldn't, I couldn't do that to anybody. I wouldn't do that. That's right. I, I went out there and risked my life to save your life. Then you just leave me hanging. You know, I lost a lot of shit, but I didn't, I didn't gain a lot of shit back because I got people that looked out for me. So I'm back on my feet. You know, I done been sick dealing with this cancer and different shit, but I'm okay. You know, I'm gonna I'm a keep on living. I'm not gonna let this shit, what they did to me, break me. Cause that's what they want to do. They want to break a black person so you don't have shit. They want you to be domestic and fight and so you can go to jail. That's what it's all about. You know, so I wasn't into none of that. So I, I learned. You want to stay in these streets, you can't argue with these women, you just got to walk away. And that's how it was. My own family, my sister Crystal Taylor was coming over there to the house of Wanda with her gas, keeping up a bunch of bullshit. You know, she lived right on um, the street, Hell, right off of 117. When you come across Vincent, that's Hell Street. She stayed on 117th and we ran on Camel across Western. She would always want to come by our house and keep a bullshit just to destroy somebody. I shouldn't be living over in Beverly, you know, cause you went to school. My father sent her to these good schools and all this shit, you know, but I shouldn't, I shouldn't have shit. I should be back down in the gutter in Inglewood. A lot of people come out of Inglewood, they successful. They doing good. You know, everybody, you grew up over there, you still do good. I know a lot of, People that, that left Inglewood doing real good. You know, it's, it then came back up now. But it was always, it was always good over there, man. Yeah. All back in the 80s, we always done good all the time. It was never a lot of issues, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you with the gangs. Yeah. But it's, it but with Wanda, man, it was, I don't know. Yeah. Our son, he, 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 me and him get along real good, you know, but I don't know. Like you say, 28 years is, is definitely still a, 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 a sticky topic, you know, yeah, yeah. a sensitive topic, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, what bothers you the most about everything that transpired? Just the setup, set me up like that. To lure me out there. And I, I think it was for him to do that, to lure me out there so they can kill me. That, that's, that's what it was all about, for him, for them to knock me off. He figured if I come out there shooting, they can kill me and get away with it. Because I'm a felon, I'm out there with a gun. See, it would have been wiped away. They'd have called me, you know, called me a gang member. I was running drugs for all the disciples and all that shit. They put all that shit out there, man put on me on the news that I was head of the Black Gangs Disciples and all type of shit. They put it all in for a whole week. You know how embarrassing that is? For people get you, you had me on the front page of the fucking Sun Time, and people that I knew was saying, that we, that's you on the paper. You know, I had to lie to them, said that ain't me, cause the guy was on there had a lot of hair. I'm bald headed now, I said, that ain't fucking me. They're like, yeah, that's you. But it's fucked up. They do that to somebody. You know, spread your name all on TV nationwide. That, that's what really hurt me the most, man. To destroy you like that. And we don't have shit now. Black people don't have nothing. Just your credit and your name, that's it. That's all we have. You, you can't, people don't like you, man. No matter what you do, you can't satisfy nobody. You can be married, you can't satisfy your wife because they're always looking for something else. And I found out about women. They always, if a man grin in their face, they got to go and be with that man. Then they come home and you don't want to sleep with you and shit like that, making excuses. But it didn't bother me, you know, because I knew my plan. 
you know, my father always taught me, he was a 33rd degree Mason. He always taught me a lot of shit, man, about women, about life. And I knew which way to go with my life. That's why I didn't care. You want to leave, you leave. You want to be with these men, it's going to be with them. I don't care. I think jail was my freedom, just be away from her. Really? Yeah. Because the way, the way she did me. Because I, I would never do that to her. Never in life. Turn my back. But, but it's cool, you know. I'm not mad at her for what happened. I just, just let it go. Because that's what happened. You know, she did it. I went and spent all that time. I just let it go. I really don't care no more, man. Whatever she want to do, um, you know, my daughter, I love my daughter. I had two daughters. I love both of them a lot. But I'm, I'm not mad about anything no more because I, I have to release it, man. Because if I keep holding that shit, it's going to kill me. You know, worry about what they done did to me. But, you know, but sitting in prison. Tell us what that experience was like those four years. It, it was rough, man. But when I first when I first got there, the white shirt said somebody called and told him that I was coming. I figured it was my father that did that because they was all Masons. When I get there, they was doing all that shit to me. You know what I'm saying? And then I had to shake his hand. You know, they never let you touch them. Them guards at the jail. So he covered uh, to do what I was taught to do, and he's. He said, well, he took me to the side. He said, we're not going to lock you up like that. You can walk around. You want to go to the gym. You want to work out. You want to go in the yard. You know anybody here? I said, I don't know anybody right now. Let me look around. Then I seen Becca, the police that killed that homeless guy down on Van Buren that time. Okay. He was in there. Okay. So I seen him. We were talking. Then I seen another, about five other guys from Inglewood. And they was like, man, we've been locked up in here all day, every day. And so I went back to that white shirt. I said, why don't you let them out? I know them. So we was out every day for that whole year I was there. You know, and then I left there, I went to Shiny. That was the worst fucking prison, man. The motherfuckers fight every fucking day. Guys walking around with shit on. They all in the day room, just doing all type of shit, man that you never want to see. Mm. I'm talking about people that you think that was, that was hard. No, they were braiding niggas hair and shit. All that, mm. I seen it. And I just looked at them. I just told them I'm play that shit. I told, told one guy, I said, I will kill you. I meant that shit. I said, I ain't got time for this shit in here. Don't ask me shit while I'm in here. Don't ask me when my out date. That's all they talk about, when your out date. Fuck an out date. You know, you worry about your own motherfucking shit. Get the fuck away from me. They selling cookies, pop, all type of bullshit in there. All day just bullshit. Playing cards, they ain't trying to go to school, they ain't trying to learn shit. You know, nothing. I think I went to uh, Jacksonville too. Jacksonville, it was okay. It was a lot of Mexican there, they cooked. Everybody was cool in there. Wasn't none of that bullshit there, man. But Shiny was the... That was the, the, the worst year out of four. Yeah, that's fuck. They fight every fucking day in the lunchroom, fighting, just for bullshit. Got all type of knives, nails. I don't know where the fuck they get that shit from, but they were stabbing motherfuckers in there. It was just fucked up. They would lock the place down. We couldn't take no shower for weeks. Mm. They would throw your food up under the door and shit, man. Shit you didn't even want to eat, man. Right. They treated you real like shit in there. And then the white people, them white guards, they from the country. So they ain't give a fuck. They just talk, they try to make you do shit to them so you get more time. Anything you do, they write a ticket on you. You get caught with anything like the, those pots that they cook with. Gas are altering the motherfucker, you know, so we can boil noodles and shit. They catch you doing that. You can get another year across the board. Damn. For, for to cook? Yeah, they weren't playing with you. They, yeah. They, yeah they, uh, a salt, staff assault, any of that shit. You fuck with those women, you get a staff assault, that's two years across the board. 
It was a lot, man. There was one guard lady. Her name was Speedy. I'll never forget it. She was trying to get me to have sex with her. I thought, fuck that shit. I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of gals are doing it. Fuck that shit. You might be trying to set me up. You see what I'm saying? Because I didn't know if somebody was on the inside trying to do me and send her to me to make me stay in there longer. I wasn't doing it, man. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. As soon as I can. When my out day came, I had my shit packed. I was ready to roll. Get the fuck away from out, out of that place, man. But, you know, it was, it was just the whole, my whole life experience in that penitentiary, man. It was fucked up. You don't want to do it. It seemed like it's cool. You getting away, you living, but you don't know what you getting into when you go in there. It's, it's real rough, man. Stateville, when you, when you first leave, you, they take you by Stateville. You go in there and it's fucked up. You don't want to stay in there. You'll be dead. You think the street's rough? They kill you in there. Because the warden, all of them are part of that shit. They knock your ass off. If you're in there talking, getting in other people's business, that's why you can't be in nobody's shit. You go in there, do your time, work out, go to yard, go to school, and that's it. That's all you have to do to really make it, man. But I, I made it through that them four fucking years, man, and it really, it really bothered me to come out and try to start life over. And it's hard. Yeah. Don't nobody want to help you. They looking at you as a killer. You shooting people. That's how they look at us now. Anytime you try to go and get a job, you got anything on you, anything. We don't want to hire you because you don't look right. What a look got to do with us working? You know what I'm saying? No matter what you got on your body, as long as you performing that job, that, that's all what matter to me. I don't care what you do. As long as you get, get it done. But now you can't do it, man. Nothing. People just got to judge you all the time. You don't look right. You look like you're going to rob me. You know, like I go in stores now. People look at me, you know. It's, it's just rough, man. Real rough. Can you tell us about the relationship you had with Fluky Stokes? Because we know him as like, like one of like, like the Chicago, one of Chicago OGs, original gangsters, you know? Yeah, but um, Fluky, he was, he was a cool guy, man. He wasn't like people say he was. He always gave you money. You know, if you needed anything, we ride around all 47th Street, 63rd. And his son, Wimp, he was cool. They weren't like they people saying they was doing things in the street like that, but they was all about making money. That's what it was all about. None of that killing people, all that. They People just put things out there like that yeah. to make them look like he was real tough. But I drove around. We went to different places. 79th, it was a restaurant at 79th and Jeffrey. You drop them off over there. You hang in there. We just ran the street. Everybody, it was a lot of soldiers, you know, doing different things in the street. Yeah. And, and that's how we came up making money, being around the guy. He was never like that. You know, he gambled a lot. He had a lot of money. Anything you needed, he done it for you. His daughter, Sabrina, all those, all those people, man, they was, they was always cool. All down on 47th Street. We just did a lot, man. Yeah. Everybody sold, man, to make money, to make a living. We had to do it. So that's, that's, that's my life, man, just trying to make it in Inglewood. Mm -hmm. If you didn't do something, you just fail. You have to got to make money some type of way. And, and, and that's what I did, man. Yeah. But I stopped at a certain point. But a lot of, a lot of other big drug dealers I done been around, all we did was made money. You know, that's it. I made a lot. Doing that, that shooting, I had like 500000 in that Jaguar. They took that money. Mm. I had it in the back trunk part. Really? And it, yeah, it was going. Cash? In, huh? Cash, cash. They took it. And um, some of the other police mentioned it. I'm like, how would y'all know I had it in there if one of y'all didn't take the shit? But they took my car and put it in a fucking pound. So they ripped the whole car apart. See, somebody... <sighs> hold on, hold on, Mr. Wilson. We talking about... Half a mil. Yeah. Cash. Yeah. I'm making money, man. I was. Yeah, you was getting it on. I was real smart, man. <laughs> so, you know. You was getting it on. One other thing, I was having money in the cemetery. 
Okay. See, people ain't that, yeah, no. ain't up on that. Yeah, no. Some of my family, I would dig up the, the stone. You know, they had a stone there. I walked there on a Sunday when the, when the cemetery crowded. I would walk there and meet one of them little shovels and sit there in a the chair. And I'd be digging right there. I put a blanket around the chair and I'd be digging. Don't nobody see me what I'm doing. I'm just digging until I get down far enough. And I'll put the money in the bags. I double up the Ziploc bags and put the money down there and put the dirt back on it and put the grass back. That's how I hid a lot of my money. So I, would tell, I used to tell guys, had your money in the cemetery. Motherfucker never, they never figured this shit out. And I said, if you're going to deal with somebody, deal with some drugs, meet them at the cemetery. Because you're going to see their ass come in and you're going to see them leave out. Get there two hours early. Be Make sure your family buried there so if the police come, I'm here to visit my fucking family. Fuck you talking about? But you, are, I would always put shit at another grave site. So I'm watching this motherfucker if he come get it. See what I'm saying? So you can never tell me you didn't get it because I'm watching your ass the whole time. And I will leave. You never know I was there. Because guys just call me. You come, you come, and I would never show up. Mm -hmm. you, you set me up. You know, so, I told one of my friends, he got set up the same way. The guy kept calling about 10 times. I said, don't fucking go. I said, do not go. Oh, man, it ain't nothing. He got up there, he locked his ass up. Police waiting on him. The dude was in the back seat of the police car. Locked his ass up. But he went to court. They beat it because he didn't have enough shit for them really charging. But I told him not to go. But I was real smart, like car batteries. I used to put the shit in them dummy car batteries. You know, we used to play the music back in the day. He had the two batteries. I don't know if you remember back in the day, we had two car batteries in them old Chevys, the 76 Chevy. Okay. I used to hook cables from the motor to the to the batteries and you know, put the shit in there and drive around. Okay. Cause you never you never see the shit in there. Yeah. You open the hood and look, you see two batteries. I got music. That's the batteries for. They would never fuck with them. But I had them tightened down. Cause when you look at the old school Chevy, you ever look at the 76 Chevy, they had to bolt it like some of the car now they hold the battery down. I would bolt them down. So you'd never look. I was real smart at it. I never, some guys used to put it in the speaker, but I said, you're going to get caught because they're going to pull them fucking speakers down. Them big boxes in the back, they were hiding. I said, that's the dumbest shit you can ever do. You know, and then them compartments they was making, they're going to find that shit. They're going to take your car in, they're going to rip that motherfucker apart, they're going to find that shit. Your ass going to, you're going to get 10 years off the top. You got to hide that shit another way. I used to tell them all the time, there's other ways to hide that shit, and they'll never find it. And I, I know where I used to put it in the vents. I used to take the vent out and I put a string on it. I always use a black string and I would get some crazy glue and I would stick that shit to the side. So you would just, you won't see the black string. So when I want to get it out, I just pull the black string from the part, pull it up and I get through, I'll drop it back down through the holes. You'll never see it. You just got to be smart and doing That's how we moved a lot of, a lot of drugs. We was real smart at it, man. I always learned from the top. And the Mexican guys, some of my real top guys in Mexico, they taught me a lot of shit. It's just Mexican? Yeah. Them, some of my friends right now today, they still doing shit. Okay. You know, but we real tight. You know, I can get anything from it, but I, I kind of stopped. But I can, I can get back rich right now if I wanted to, because they'll give it to me if I call them. But I just, I just don't trust a lot of them. My people, they be telling me to get it, but fuck that. You gonna tell on me. That's why I don't, that's, that's why I don't do it. They, they grin in your face, man. I don't trust they motherfucking ass no more. After what I went through, I don't trust none of them at all. They ain't right. I'm just telling you, one of my friends, um, he was on the police department. He got killed. Wayne Smith, the guy hit him on the ash on, the, on his motorcycle. I was like, how could that shit just happen like that? Killed he was, him. He was the police? Yeah, they killed him. Ran his ass over, man. But it was it was something else that I heard, man. Because I was like, how did he just get killed like that? I just talked to him that night. We were supposed to hooked up. And 11 o'clock at night, my phone rang. And they talking about, Wayne well, dead. Wayne well, dead. I'm like, what the fuck? And he was on the ass. And when I got out there, he was on the ground dead. 
Mixon got ran him over, man. I don't know. Really hurting me, you know. They, they, they got ran him over. And the guy only got like three years in prison for the shit. You know, it's like, I don't know, it's like a field day on killing police ladies, man. Oh, this was a young lady? No, this was a guy, but I'm okay, just saying, okay. but some of the police ladies that work with one, I know it was always friendly fire. They killed one on 6 3rd at that time, and I was like, how you going to shoot your own partner? She come to the back door, you come to the front door. That's why I never understood it. Mm. It's, it's a lot of shit, man, that's going on yeah. in, in the police department. Yeah. You know, they talk about gangs on the street. They try to blame all us for gangs. Y'all hiring them too. And then they getting away with murder. With all the gang wars and shit. It ain't us. It's them doing it. Like they like you live in one area, they're going to shoot a motherfucker on 63rd and say that y'all did it. See what I'm saying? That's why they could never catch them, because they were doing it. They were whacking motherfuckers off and blaming it on y'all, putting on the news so they can keep their job. Game war. You remember back when the game wars was going on? It wasn't us doing that shit. How you think people getting away with it? You got to think about that. Mm-hmm. And then you can't go across that area because they think you done shot one day guy. And ain't nobody around him do the shit. People didn't see it. But I, I, somebody told me this shit, man. So that's why I knew it was true. Another police officer told me. And that's why I like, this is some fucked up shit. So y'all want us to kill each other. Why you think all now, all the everything changed? Because everybody's dead now. Most of all the gang members dead. The old block on 6-3rd, it's all closed off now. You can't even, they got a barricade and shit over there now. You can't even go up in there. They got police all out there. They got gates and lips up and reading your fucking license plates now. When you take your ass over there. They designed that shit to get rid of us, man. And that's what it's all about. If, if you don't try to make it or make, make your life and get up out of here, they're going to destroy you another way. They're going to put your ass in jail so you never see the day of light. I'm just telling you, so you just need to, people just need to change their life, man, and get away. Don't let these people, I ain't trying to put on white or black, but we need to change our own life. That's it. And do what's right. And work, make your money, and, and get the fuck on. Move, man. Go south. Just get away from here. Because we ain't going to be able to make it. Because taxes, everything. But I'm just telling you, man. They say CPD, like, the biggest gang in the world. Yeah. Yeah, they the biggest gang. They, they control everything. And a lot of them get on there. But I don't blame them. If you want a career, you get on there so you can make money by real estate. That's what a lot of them get on there for. But don't get on there for the wrong reason and railroad all the black people, man. You know, you sending us to jail to make yourself look good, get a piece of paper to hang on your fucking wall. And, and that's what I see it, that's what it's all about. Just destroy us, man. And I really hate that shit. You know, don't, don't mess with us and we can do this, we can jam you up. That's what it's all about. And then, I tell you this, when I was going to court, it was like a chess game. They play us like a fucking chess game. Your lawyer and the state's attorney. See who will make the first fucking move to send your ass away. My own lawyer, Mark Martin and Ed Jensen, them, they full of shit, man. Mark Martin gonna tell me him and the state's attorney goes out to eat all the time. So your ass was with her to railroad me too. To they send me, yeah, they, they send me to jail. That's why I was kind of pissed about it, man. But I thought this lawyer charged me all this fucking money and he still sent me to jail. Told me if I give him more money, he can keep me out so I wouldn't have to do all that time. Mm. That's what he told me. And I was like, this is the worst shit you can ever do to somebody, man. But, but I'm, I'm okay, man, you know, so. But I just hope Wanda, you know, everything work out for, you know, in her life. <laughs> change and, and never do this shit to nobody again. The railroad you. Yeah. But, but it was a lot of stuff I don't want to talk about with my daughter and things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I get out and uh, take me to child support, man. Took my license, everything. Yeah. 
I'm like, what else could you do to me? So tell us, what, where do you get your strength from? I just pray, man. And and Darius Brooks, the gospel singer, me and him real tight. Okay. And this other guy, he send me prayers every day. Cisco, he, he a DJ. Okay. We just all been tight. He send me prayers, man. That's how I get through day to day, every day. I try not to be around nothing no more, man. I, I just don't want to, any little thing I do there, just look to get me for something. I ain't, I ain't been no trouble in them 20 fucking years. I just stay away, cause anything, I get caught for anything, that's it. They gonna flash it back on TV. Anything I do, that's why I don't let people provoke me to do anything. Cause, but I ain't gonna let you keep pushing my fucking buttons. I'll get you. I'll wait. You know what I'm saying? So I just wait on you. And I'll catch you. You keep fucking with me for no reason. You know, I just don't like that because I don't bother nobody. And I don't like, don't, don't lie on me about some bullshit. You know, but I, I just don't understand our people why you have to do that. Why you gotta lie on somebody for no reason just to make yourself look good. You know, my father and the Masons always teach you to watch the motherfucker always bring you the news. I always watch him. And I learned that at St. John's going to my father's classes. And they was right. Never ride with a person because you don't know what they got on the clothes. When they get caught, your ass going down too. And we need to all learn that, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you go to jail, you shoot somebody for somebody, you fuck. They ain't sending you shit. You gonna be like me. They ain't sending you a damn. But you going down on some gang stuff, but ain't none of them sending you no money, man. Nothing. They're going to leave you hanging. I know a lot of guys that was in there said they did shit. None of the guys in the street sent them shit. They were pissed. Some of them had 30 years, man, for doing something for somebody. Why you fuck up these young boys' lives like that, man? It don't send them shit. That's what I was just pissed about, man, when I was in there. Because that bothers me. You in here with this, you know, it's all right to be in the street, but don't let somebody else send you off to kill somebody. If you don't look out for the, his family, nothing. Just say, fuck it, he gone. You gonna find somebody else. We just hurting each other. And, and that's, that's what I learned, man. Yeah. You know, so I just try to be strong and try to, I get a lot of these young guys jobs because I own my own construction company. So I give them jobs okay. and teach them how to work. I said, you don't have to go out here stealing and, and taking from people. You can make this money. You learn this trade, and you can, you can make money. Because a lot of people need things done. All you have to do is dress right and, and go on the job being right and be respectful to people. They're going to pay you. You can't go in there with that bullshit talking that street stuff to them. You got to change. And, and that's how I've always been, man. Yeah. You know, we all good people. When somebody push your button... You're going to change. You know what I'm saying? Don't think somebody will punk or something like that. You ain't going to punk nobody. You, you, if they respect you, you respect them. And, th and that's what it's all about. Give respect to everybody. All that shit, man. I, I just don't like it. You know, I'm just humble and I, I have to change. I change a lot. You know, just going through everything in life. I really have, man. Yeah. But I'm just proud of my daughter went to the army, graduated, did everything. I'm, you know, I'm just glad that she's, she come out smart, everything. Both my daughters, they doing good. Sure. And that's, that's what I'm glad about. Yeah. That they didn't get to this point. You know, they're going to they gonna have a life. But my youngest daughter wanted to know what really happened and why all this stuff happened. You know, and I just couldn't really tell her, you know, all the things that went on in life, you know, with this between me and her mother and all, all the things that went on, man. It was, it was like a nightmare, day to day. You know, I had to wear a bulletproof vest, you know, in the street, because I didn't know which way it was going to come. I had to be ready, carrying a gun every day, because I was ready. If they can't, I was going to blast. I'm, I'm real good. I don't miss shit, man. I was trained real good. I would, you know, I don't play that shit. I, I get AK in there, that shit, I'm good. I don't miss. I ain't gonna just shoot no anybody. 
I'm gonna get the one I'm getting. And I can hit you in any point of your body. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna do all that old crazy shit. You know, you shoot somebody, you aim, you shoot that person that spot, knock them down, that's it, one shot. That's it, you don't need to shoot nobody no 15 times and all that shit, man. You don't need to do that. You hit them one time and that's it. You know, you, you just gotta learn. Practice and I go down south in the country and I learn. I learned this shit for years. So I ain't, you know, well, I don't play with that no more, you know? Yeah. But if it come down to it, I will. You know, they come bother me. I gotta do what I gotta do. That's, that's it, man, but. I'm glad you missed that that officer you was shooting at. Cause we yeah. probably wouldn't be able to have this conversation. If no, you hit I, no, I wouldn't get out. Cause we had, she had paperwork. Uh -huh. There was a hit on her. Right. That's why all that shit didn't happen in court. Yeah, she had the paper where it was signed off and everything. He he really got killed, but his ass was. The thing was, the car wasn't even registered to nobody. Why are you out there? That's the whole thing. Why are you out there in this in this blaze and I need rest to the police department? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Charles Williams, I hate that piece of shit, man. He the one did everything, set everything up. You know, he's a bitch ass, man. I, I couldn't stand that guy. But if he'd have been there, I'd have got his ass because he set the whole shit up. You know what I'm saying? He walk around like he's some, everybody scared him on the police bomb. You mean Charles Williams, Sergeant Jackson, all them scared of those guys. For what? Because you a fucking police? You crooked too. All them some bitch, they just got away with it, man. Isn't that mad daily? All them motherfuckers, man, they do shit to you. You, you see all those guys that got out of prison now? Cause the shit they did to him, all those guys been set up. That's what they do to you. Put some shit on you, send you away. But you know, but I, I, I started to kill him. I had, to, I could have killed him. Right. I was right at him. But I decided he was, he was too scared. He didn't know what Charles went and put him up to. He even said that. He confessed to it. So I could have did. I was dead on him. He couldn't move. I'm right here, he right there in front of me. So if I'm locked down on you, I got you. What you gonna do if I'm locked down on you? He, he, he just turned red in the face. And I just, I like this motherfucker, don't even know what he doing. They gonna sit this man out here to get killed. That's not shot at the back window. I just, then he took off, man. That's not shot the tires out in the window. I was like, let me stop. Cause this, this is fucked up. He was hollering on the radio for help. You see what I'm saying? That's why I knew they put him out there to kill him. That's cool. Now I'm just telling you, man, it's, it was just so rough, man. Like, why you think they had, they, why you think they headed out for Wanda like that though? They said like that she was, him. said she was telling on the police or some shit. This, oh, this, okay. this, this is what they came up with. They said that she was, but I don't, I don't think she was doing that. They were just mad at her because she was so smart and, you know, was doing a lot of stuff in the community, helping people. They didn't want her to help the drug dealers and all that. She was helping a lot of people in the area. And they didn't want her doing that. They just want to keep everything messed up. And I figured all that out. They, they never liked it, huh? There's a couple of them. There's one now that I ride the motorcycle with, man. This motherfucker. I was doing some work in Flossmore for this lady. So I told him the lady was moving because her husband died. So I, I said, well, she's selling some nice paints. So this motherfucker come out there, man. He kissing on the fucking lady, don't even know her. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like, what the fuck is you, what the fuck is you doing? So he kissing on her? He was kissing on the lady, hugging and shit. I'm like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> It really fucked with me. And then he brought another guy out there. They trying to fuck out of the paintings, giving her a little money. The paint worth for thousand dollars. He trying to give her a hundred dollars and all this shit. So it's like making me look bad. You know what I'm saying? A lady used to work, she used to work for people gas. She was a rich lady. So then, then like a week later, he gonna tell the lady, don't trust me, I'm from Inglewood, I'm a thief. I've been knowing a lady for seven fucking years. 
been doing work for. She told me what the fuck he said. I said, you fat motherfucker, you. Gonna sit up and tell a lady I'm a fucking thief. I had keys to the lady house, they never took shit. Me and her husband was real tight. But that's how people try to destroy you. He knew I was making good money out there in Flossmore. You know what I'm saying? I'm making $10,000 to $15,000 off a house out there. He see me with shit. You know, I even sold him my fucking Harley Davidson because I had two. Trying to look out for him and you fuck around and do that shit to me? Then he put his name on police reports, man, when the shooting. That's what I tell you, man. He fucked me up, man. I seen his name on the police report. And that really, you know, but I just- Betrayal. Yeah, he, he did that to me, man. And, and I didn't know he was like that. I told some other officer, I said, this, this motherfucker went out there and did this shit to me with this lady. Then he started going to the house. After she moved, went to a Christmas party. Another motherfucker called me and told me. He was out there rubbing on her legs and shit, man. Like, what type of blowdown shit are you? Is you like Michael Clifton? Fuck with these women like that? They do that shit to somebody? I don't know, man. Some of, them, some of them sick, man. They say Michael Clifton like some type of monster. He was. Yeah, he was. I think him and Wanda got into fights before, too. She had told me later on. Yeah, I think she told us that, too. Yeah, yeah he, he used to fight and all when she stayed on 68th in Michigan. Because I used to go by there. But he was, he was crazy. He drove a little black car. He was, he was crazy, man. He had problems. But his wife left him now from all this shit. After she found out he was doing all this shit. All the women came forward. Yeah. When I seen on the news, I said, they got his ass. The motherfucker lied on me now. Now he see how I feel to be lied on. You know, but I don't feel shit for him, man. If he go down for the rest of his life, I don't care. You know, sit in there. You know, he lost his pension, everything. And them that, a lot of them that did shit to me, shit didn't happen to him already. A lot of the guys that did shit to me that I grew up with, some of them dead. You fucking do shit to me, now your ass out of here. You know, so I, I don't feel for him, man. You know, you don't, you don't lie on somebody that's been around. We supposed to be gas tight. And you fuck around, want to trick and do shit to me behind my back? Calling the police station. Yeah, he was robbing people. Yeah, we knew it. Was calling the fucking police station on me. I'm like, y'all bitch ass motherfuckers. I heard some of the voices. Now who knew who the fuck it was? You know, I'm like, y'all some ass, you know, straight asses, man, to do that to me. You know, but, it, but it's, it's gonna never leave me, man, never. Yeah. Until I die, man. Cause, you know, I would never do it. Like I said, I would never do that to anybody. One that nobody, never, you know. So I don't know, man. I just wish her good luck with, with everything, man. You know, I, I truly do. With all that you'd have been through, Mr. Wilson, can you leave a message to the youth that's watching this? Well, I just want the, the young people to know, just try to focus on your education, stay in school, and just try to listen to your parents and, and do the right thing. Don't, don't run the streets, because the streets ain't gonna get you nowhere. Just try, to, just try to focus on your life and education. That's what I want the youth to do. And try to go to talk to anybody if you need help. Don't get in these gangs and just, just stay strong. Yeah. That's, that's what I want them to do. Yeah. I truly do, man. Because these kids, they getting killed every day. Little babies. I just wish they just stopped all this shooting for nonsense, man. Killing people over nothing. It, it, it don't make no sense. Just, just killing people every day. It's just, just sad, man, with, with the police lady getting gunned down in a yard coming home. You can't get out your car, do anything. Can't be safe no more. So I just wish it just just be peace, man. Yeah. That's, that's all I want for, for everybody. Yeah. Just get some understanding and for the police to stop just Killing people, setting people up all the time, lying on them, just to make themselves look good and feel good, but they hurting inside. They killing themselves for what they done did to folks. 
there's so many police just killing themselves every day. But we just need to stick together and get to know each other. Stop pointing people out and thinking they bad or some gang member. You don't, you don't know because you see somebody with tattoos on them. They just want tattoos on their body. That's, that's it. But just stop doing that to people. Just have peace, man. That, that's all I want. That's it. You definitely got a, a, a peaceful spirit, I can tell. You know, all mm -hmm. that you've been through, you'll admit that it still bothers you, but you don't let it affect you to where, you know, you're just sitting around moping, and, you know. Right. You're keeping it moving. Yeah, you know I, I, I don't. I, I keep working every day, mm -hmm. helping people. I, I, don't, I don't change, and, and I'll be respectful to people. But that's not the way I was raised, to be disrespectful and calling people out of an image, you know, all that. I, I, I don't do that, man. Yeah. I'm not, you have to really push my button to make me mad. You got to really fuck me for me to get to that point. But other than that, I'm just a normal guy. I help anybody. Yeah. And, and I have a good heart to do that because it's not right to, to hurt somebody because you got to look at what if somebody hurt somebody in your family, how you going to feel? You go out and hurt, kill somebody else in their family, and they kill your mother, somebody, how you gonna feel? And you don't win and whack somebody else. See what I'm saying? You gotta see how they feel inside. When you go and kill their little baby, shooting at somebody else for nothing, over five dollars, a couple of dollars. I, I just don't get it, man. I just don't. I heard you, uh, you know, early in our combo, you, you put emphasis on you know, women and, you know, how they be moving, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, us as men, uh, you know, a lot of men get into it over women. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, you know, my father always told me like 90% of the street beefs, it got a woman, you know what I'm saying, at the root of it. He right. Yeah. He, he's right because women, some, not all of them, but some of them, they looking for money. They looking for you to take them to the store, spend all this money on what they doing for you. They don't have no credit. You, yourself good, but they don't have anything. But they want to use you, they want to ride in your car because you got a nice car with rims on it. That's all they think about. You don't need to be around them. They're going to mess with your friend. Say you go away. They're going to have sex with your friend, your buddy that you have over your house playing Xbox and all that shit with. You see what I'm saying? So I, I don't trust them. I don't trust them like that no more. I truly don't. Not at all. They grin, they put all that perfume on, smelling good, fuck all that. I don't care. I don't care what you look like. You're behind. You done went over there and had your butt did, your breath died. I don't want that. If you, if you ain't natural, you want to do all that shit, want me to get your hair and nail done, go and get you a job and get your own shit done. Or go back in the day, like when your mother used to go to Walgreens and get their own shit and that nail stuff and, and, and found your own fucking nails and do them. But you'll go to those Chinese. <laughs> hey, look, you'll go to them Chinese and let them dip your hand in some motherfucking antifreeze and windshield wash the shit and give your ass a disease. See what I'm saying? You didn't know they was using windshield that you put in your car. They were putting that in that blue shit. That's what they were soaking their motherfucking nails in, making them sick. They didn't know it. Oh, they, they get some, they dipping our hands in some blue solution. Mother, you dumb asses. Don't you know that's windshield solution? What shit is blue? Right. You, you dumb motherfuckers. You shit, you know? You know what I'm saying? If you're going to clean your hand, like a lot of time, they taught it down south. Like, if you got fungus on your feet, you get a cap of bleach and put it, put the water and put the, the cap of bleach in there and soak your feet in there. It cleans your toenails. I use my hand a lot of time when I'm doing a lot of work. I put, I put a cap of bleach, chloride bleach in the bowl and I soak my hands and clean my, my fingers. Right. It takes all that shit off. Right. Then you get lotion and do your hands back, man. But I'm just telling you, man, but these women, you better be aware of who you deal with. And then with the FBI, and the police, they would send women to club undercover to date you and, and get into your whole fucking life and set your ass up. That's why I like these guys gone. Cause they want to be these pretty ass women. That's the devil, man. You ain't gonna set me up like that. I never, never rolled them off around in my cars. Never. Because I knew they was on to set your ass up. I'm just, just telling you, man, yeah. your father was right, but 
They don't want nothing but money. Them purses. What you buying a purse for fucking five thousand dollars? I look at that guy six nine. I, he told me I spent a hundred racks on these fucking purses. For what? Cause the fucking name? Put my name on there. Give me a hundred <laughs> racks. You dumb motherfuckers, man. They it, and then uh, I just look at they fake asses, man. All on. I hate looking at this shit. Always. What you doing for the community? You showing these cars, these fucking big ass chains on your neck? What the fuck you doing? You know, like Kanye West grew up around, and I he don't come and he build a school in California. Why you don't build no shit in Inglewood? You see what I'm saying? Where you come from? None of them do shit. I feel for R. Kelly. I was around him a lot of times, man. Really? I feel for him, man. That shit, he fucking them girls, man. But he didn't do all that shit they say he did. They set him up. They knew he couldn't read and write. Mm. They set the man up to send his ass to jail. Mm. All the motherfuckers behind that shit, man. The man didn't do all that shit. I just go out to his house. I just, I just know shit he didn't do. Right. Them girls lied on him. How you, how he in Chicago, you in Atlanta, or whatever, in a motherfucking house? So you pissing in buckets and shitting in buckets. He ain't even there. What, what door lock? Why the fuck you can't walk out? Right. See what I'm saying? You look at the lie. How I'm gonna lock you in a motherfucking house? I'm on a tour. You left here in this motherfucking house. You can't walk out the fucking door. They staged all this shit. One motherfucker told it. Did they put them motherfucking dark curtains up there to set him up? That's why you can't go around. I used to tell them, leave them fucking women alone. I told them a couple of times. I said, they're going to ruin your ass. They're going to get you. Man, that's interesting, man. You know, you're kind of like the first person to shut that perspective because at this point, Everybody feel like Kale's guilty, you know, no. since he away. You know no, what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't do that shit. He didn't do all that. They set him up, and people are lying just to get money. Just to be on TV to get some fucking dollars. You see the girls laughing. If somebody didn't rape you and shit, why are you laughing? Right. right. That shit ain't fucking funny. People don't even see the whole fucking picture, man. They did that because the man, they said the man's stupid. The man wrote his fucking music. He wrote all these fucking songs. He ain't that stupid. But he would just want to have sex all the time. And Clary and the mother of them, they wanted that food truck. He didn't give them that money, so they railroad his ass. And that white guy, that fat motherfucker, come on, he been trying to get R. Kelly for years. See, all of them was in together to pay them to set him up. Gail King, Oprah, mm. they was all in it. Like 50 Cent said, Oprah didn't want him to come on her show. Because he might say something. See, you got to look at the big picture, man. Jay-Z, all them, when they did that, you know, they all ain't right, man. Sent that man away because he was, he was on top. He was on top, man. Damn. They wanted to bring him down. When it's time to bring you down, they're going to bring you down. Look at Jamie Foxx. How he just get sick like they have a fucking stroke like that? He here in Chicago. How you just going to get sick like that? Just be fucked up, man. Somebody did that bullshit, man. That's why you gotta be mindful and careful. In everything. Yeah. You know? When you think about uh your glory days, you know, when you was like on on, on top, you know? Yeah. Uh what does that look like in your mind, you know? What's one of your what's can you share what as one of your favorite memories, you know, a good time to lighten mm -hmm. the mood? I know. Cause you said 500 cash, I ain't gonna lie, that was crazy. Yeah, but I I had a good life, man. I I had a lot of, I had more than that. I had more than that. But I was just smart with my money. I used, you see, my fun time, I like going down south, riding my horses, things like that, just being down there, away from everybody. Okay. I can enjoy going around people, they cooking every day. How you doing? They waving at you, don't even know you. A lot of people come through, they waving at you. That's, that's what I like, man. Yeah. Here you wave at a person, fuck you, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I want to pull a gun on you and shit. If you say, how you doing? Fuck you, motherfucker. Don't look at me. Who want to be around that? Right. I, I, never, I never liked it, man. But all my good memories, just being down south, and I made a lot of money here, but I put a lot of money down there. Okay. And, and that's why I had a lot of fun. A lot of my family, we just... Laugh and have fun. Mm -hmm. 
you know, throwing the bean bags and all that, you know, that was my joy. Money won, won everything, but it was good to have it. Right. Money can't, came, it just gets you by every day. Right. Money don't make you happy, man. It don't. It, it don't, not to me. It's just to pay your bills and, and keep, keep you going. Okay. Yeah, and that's it. And, and me, I don't run up my credit cards. I don't, I don't do all that shit because you got cars, a lot of limit. I might buy some small shit and pay that shit off. I ain't gonna let that shit keep charging shit and, and, and you gotta pay all that fucking interest, man. I don't do that. I just be mindful with, with money. Yeah. Cause if you, want, you get in debt, you gonna always look for a sale. You don't wanna buy a bunch of shit and then you, you, you might not get anything coming, no income coming in, then how you gonna pay that bill? You have to think about all of that. Always put money to the side. You should always put money to the side. If you got exit, you making three grand, you should always put like two or three hundred to the side and don't bother. Put it in a, in a saving where you can't touch it. I always done that, man. 10%. Yeah, I had, I had a, the bank I was dealing with, Avondale Federal Savings downtown. This white guy, Walter Trojack, he the one put me up years ago. He the one started me off. Because I used to come to that bank all the time and deposit money. And... And he said, what you like to do? I said, real estate. You know, that man gave me a lot of money to start my first rehab. Right. And I gave it. When I finished the building, I sold. I gave him his money back. He said, I give me more money. It was between me and this white guy. Right at 20 North Clark. They closed it down, but it was right by City Hall. Avondale Federal Savings. This guy was real nice to me, man. He didn't even know me. He trusted me. And I came back there. He took me upstairs, man. He like, I can trust you. And that's what I liked it. You know what I'm saying? And he did a lot for me. Right now, the day I go to Chase for a loan, they won't give you shit. Your, your credit good, and they ain't gonna give you a dime. But they want your money. That's why I stopped fucking with them. They never give you a loan for nothing, no car loan, no nothing. That's why I, I don't deal with a lot of these banks. Wow. Only if you can help me, then I'll put my money down. But like now, I don't really put money in the bank. I send it down south. I don't trust them. My uncle and them take care of myself. I don't trust nothing. You can, nothing, man. Word. Nothing. If you got a house, you can cut a hole in the floor, put your safe in the floor, man. I used to cut the walls out. Like the bricks there in the basement. Because I'm real good. I can hide everything behind that wall and put it back. You would never know that I can open it. I'm real smart, man. Yeah, I can tell, man. You gotta show me something, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be, I, I got ways of doing shit you'd never, you come in all you want, you'd never find it. I'm just real smart, man. I, I just don't fuck with a lot of guys because they're going to tell on you. They get, yeah, they, they get mad and tell on you, going to tell them people. Because they did it to me at one of my properties on St. Lawrence. They came and dug up the whole fucking yard. I just pulled concrete, and they said I had dead bodies in the yard. This was this was about four years ago. Okay. Dug up my whole motherfucking yard. Really? Yeah, one of my properties. When they dug it up, one number closed, and they was mad. They had to fix all that shit. Some neighbor, the same neighbor who telling people that I did eight years, he seen me throwing shit in the, in the ground. We gonna put a pool there, and I end up cementing it. And then I thought I went down south and some neighbor called and said, the police over there tan up your backyard. And when I got on the phone with him, yeah, you got dead bodies buried up in this concrete. I'm like, what the fuck is they talking about? They dug up the whole fucking yard. I was so pissed. You know, the fuck somebody do that to me? But if they'd have dug farther, they would have seen what I had for the basement, the thing that goes in the basement, but they only dug so far. If they'd have went a little farther, they'd have seen that trench just coming from the basement to that part. When we was coming in there and had the shit on the ground, they would have got me, but they fucked up. You know what I'm saying? A little farther, they would have seen it, but they stopped. And I was like, I'm glad they stopped because I had the PVC pipe right there. It was going right back, big ass four inch pipe. But they didn't go no farther. Mm. See what I'm saying? Mm. If they'd have went a little farther, they'd have caught us. They'd have had me. 
I, you know, I just got away with it that time. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I got to stop. I ain't digging shit else. Right. Fuck that shit. Come off will be watching. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't care what time of night is, they watching you all the time. Mm -hmm. So you just got to be mindful, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, who you around and who you associate with. So that's why I cut my ties, man. A lot of guys. It ain't cool, man. No more. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah. Man, it's been a blessing hearing your story today, man. Yeah. Um, and I know you got hella more stories. I'm just, yeah. they coming out, you know? Yeah. Uh, but in all seriousness, it's a blessing to be able to talk to you this afternoon. Yeah. Um, because you've been through a lot, you know? Yeah. And, it was good to hear you express yourself and get it off your chest. You know what I'm saying? I like how you, you know, you admit it. Like, yeah, this shit still bothered me. It's been 28 years and it still bothers me. It's going to always bother me. Yeah. But you're not letting it affect you. That's what I, you know what I'm saying? Right. Admire about, you know, what I just learned about you today. Right. So, uh, you know, I definitely just want to thank you for coming to chop it up with us today. Right. Yeah. It was a pleasure, man. And um, I tell people, don't never let nothing bother you to the point that it can break you. It break you all the way down. It, you just want to just leave here or kill yourself. Don't never let that happen. You got to stay strong. You got to find something to keep your mind focused. Don't never let nobody tell you ain't worth nothing. Don't never let them bring you down like that. When I was coming up in school, teachers said, you ain't gonna never mount this shit. What about you? You know what I'm saying? But. They always try to bring bring you down. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing real good. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't care what, what you say about me. You know, you, you just, something wrong with you in, inside. Yeah. It's just real, real sad, man. The people got to tell you ain't going to mount the shit. You ain't going to never beat nothing in life. Yeah, I'm, I'm somebody and I'm going to always be somebody. Sure. You know, so I'm, I'm here. But they tried to break me in. It never happened. You know, they want to see you dead, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so I stay strong. Yeah. Yeah. What don't kill you definitely make you stronger. Yeah, so. that's right. Thanks again, Mr. Wilson. Uh, shout out to the Beer Boss for sponsoring this episode. Fellas, shout out to the Beer Boss and uh, use the DJ UTV promo code to get 20% off. Shout out to Word Productions. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time. DJ, you go crazy!